Hello, how is everybody doing? This is Mickey. Today, I would like to talk about focus stacking. And this is not a new concept in photo processing, but in the last camera meeting I attended, there were several people that when we somebody brought up the subject, they just said, I, I don't know what that is. What does it do? How do I use it? So I thought this would be a good teaching point and a good chance for a new video. And if you're like me, even though the, the concepts presented in videos are familiar to me, it's always good to see somebody else present it because somebody always has a different idea, a better concept or process that makes it even better than what I knew before. So that's what we're going to go through today. In essence, focus stacking is taking several photographs, usually two to four photographs, that are each focused at a different point in your composition. And when we stack those photographs together, Everything is hemmed in focus from front to back. It's a very, very deep depth of field, something you probably couldn't get if you were even shooting at a F16, F20. Uh, everything's in focus. The software uh, stacks it together and gives you a good depth of field. Now, when we do this stacking, there are several things we need to consider. And, and the first thing is this really needs to be a static environment. Right. In this photograph, you can see that the water is not static, but I run it at about a quarter of a second uh, shutter speed, so I could get that kind of that milky ethereal effect, and stacking fo focus stacking will actually make that even better. So this is kind of the environment for focus stacking. But if it's a windy day, your limbs, this is a winter shot in the summer, we'd have leaves on these trees. If the wind is blowing and things are moving, then you're gonna get a ghost effect on those limbs. And some people like that, some people don't. If you're not one of those people that don't like it, you want everything to be sharp and in focus, then a windy day is probably not the day to do this, All right? The next thing to remember is that there is a technical side of this and it's called focus breathing. And focus breathing is where your lens actually causes a little shift in your composition so that everything is not lined up exactly the same. And that's why we're on a tripod, to make sure everything is lined up exactly the same in each shot we take. But as you focus, as your lens elements move back and forth, it can cause a little shift or what they call focus breathing. And you can kind of see that here. If you look at this photograph, you can see, I want you to look at the rocks right here. This is foc the focus area here. The next focus area is going to be down here. And as I click, you can see there's a small shift. I'll click again to show you. We can see the water is different. That's fine. That's going to blend just fine. But the rocks have shift shifted, and that's what we call focus breathing. Their software that we're going to use today, we're going to use Lightroom and Photoshop. And... Photoshop has an auto align feature. We're going to go through that here in just a minute. And that diminishes the effect we have of focus breathing. I really have never had any problem with focus breathing. The software has always taken care of it. Now, there are some camera lens combinations, and it's usually Sony lenses, Sony bodies, Nikon lenses, Nikon bodies, that they do have a focus breathing compensation. I have never used it. Uh, I never found the need to use it, but if that's something you want to consider, if you do have a Nikon and a Nikon lens, some of the better lenses do have the focal compensation, and it is very lens dependent. All right, so now that we have all those basic rules uh, out of the way, let's just start processing the photograph so we can then stack them and complete, complete the processing. To start out with, we want to have all our photographs to have the basic same changes in uh, processing. And how I like to do it, I only put on the very basic changes before uh, I start uh, stacking. I, I don't get too involved in, in my exposure and highlights and shadows, just the very basic. So we're gonna take this picture here. We're gonna increase ex exposure a little bit, uh, add a little contrast. Uh, a little bit on the highlights. No, I think I'll bring the highlights down a little bit and bring the shadows up. Uh, we'll check our whites, hold our option key down and see if anything's getting blown out. And our blacks, we don't want everything crushed in our blacks, so we'll have that about right there. Maybe add just a little clarity and just give it a little bump in vibrance. So if we look before, it's just a subtle change, but to me, it's a good starting point. Now what we want to do is make sure all the photographs that we're going to be stacking have the same exposure 
as the first one. And there's a couple ways to do that. One, you can grab your first photograph and right click on it or control click or um, control click for a Mac. And you're going to go to develop settings, copy settings. You're going to make sure everything is checked. We're not using any masking, so that doesn't need to be checked and hit copy. Next, you're going to select the next three photographs that we're going to stack with. And you can click on one, hold your shift key down and click on the last one. Or you can hold one, click on one, and hold your command key and click on the ones you want. Once you get that done, right click again and you go to develop settings, paste settings. And as we do that, you can see all our photographs now have the same uh, exposure settings as before. And in this one, you see we have a gentleman up here, and I'm going to show you why that's not important when we start stacking. All right, you can also stack it another way. You can click on number one. Uh, make all the changes that you want to the photograph and then hold your shift key down and click on the last one in your set then come over here in the develop module and click sync and it'll bring up the same synchronized settings hit synchronize it'll synchronize all the photographs so have the, they have the same exposure settings all right so now that we have all the exposure settings we are now going to dip our toe into photoshop and when i mean dip our toe that's about all we're going to do it is very simple some people will kind of get a little edgy when we start talking about photoshop because they're not familiar with it and they're uncomfortable with it but this is a very very simple process and a very effective process to auto align and then focus stack our photograph all right, so we want to highlight all our photographs that we're going to stack. And just so you know, uh, I'll go through my photographs right here. Number one is this area right here, as you can tell, is in focus. Let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. So this is in focus. Then we move to number two. And in this one, this area is in focus. As we move to three, this area is in focus and as we move to four this area at the bottom of the falls right here is in focus so that's our focus stack that we want to want to put together so i'm going to hit my shift key i'm going to light up one through four and now you can go under photo edit in and all the way down to the bottom open as layers in photoshop you can also right click on the photograph edit in the very same thing open as layers in photoshop and this kind of confounds people uh, of how we get layers or several photographs as one composition in Photoshop. And this automates the process and makes it very, very easy. All right, so here we are popping into Photoshop and it's stacking all the photographs, the four that we want to uh, blend together. And it's putting them in the order that I wanted. And I usually start with the very bottom one. Let me turn off these layers so we can see each one. Uh, this layer is the one that's in focus up front and you can see that the gentleman is up here Now let me take a side step here and explain this what's going to happen as we auto align and stack this It is going to mask away the areas that are not in focus on each one of these and then combine them and when it combines them the masked areas that were not in focus will not show up in the final photograph so with this one, the only area that's in focus is this area right here. And Photoshop will mask away automatically everything else, which will make this gentleman go away. It's just the coolest thing in the world. When I first talk, took the picture, I thought, oh, i got to shoot the whole sequence over again. And then I remembered, no, no, when we focus stack, we're going to hide the areas that aren't in focus. So that means I'm good to go. All right. So if we look at the rest of the photographs, you can see this is the area that's in focus. We'll look at the next one. This is the area that's in focus, and we look at the final one. This area and above is all in focus. So we're going to turn them all back on. And now what we want to do is auto-align these. We want to make sure that they all, even through focus breathing, and maybe I jostled the tripod, we want to make sure that they're all in alignment. So we're going to make sure that all the layers are highlighted. We're going to hit Shift and click so all four layers are highlighted. The next thing we want to do is go under edit and we want to go to auto align layers this and we want to choose auto we don't need any of these other ones just auto vignette geometric distortion we don't need we don't need to use these 
and we're going to hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to look at all four of these photographs and it's going to align them, as you can see right here, so that everything is the same in each photograph. And you can notice on the side here, there's just a little bit of gray checkered space and that's where there's not any pixels, any picture pixels. And that's because that little bit of focus breathing caused us to have this little area that there are no pixels now once we've combined everything. All right, so everything is still out of focus because we haven't done the focus stacking yet, but at least we have everything aligned. The next thing we want to do is stack it. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure all these are lit up, which they are. We're going to go to edit and we're going to auto blend. All right, this is the same thing we would use if we we're going to make a panorama, except we're going to stack images into one instead of three into one. All right, so we're going to stack them so it's all together. Seamless tones and colors, content aware fill. That's optional if you want. I've never had any problem with it. I usually leave it checked. And we'll hit OK. Now it's going to go through the process of looking at all the focal areas, that are the areas that are in focus, and it's going to keep those and it's going to mask away the ones that are not in focus. All right, and then it's going to make the final picture, which is what we're looking at right here. So if we look at over here, white reveals, black conceals. So anything that's in white is the area that is in focus. Anything that is black is not. So in this bottom one, remember there was that man here? Now everything's in focus and the man is gone because look, he was up here and this is the close focus, the, this rock focus. So it kept that rock in some of the water and masked everything else away. And then it finally combines all these and creates a final picture right here, which is the area, uh, the picture that has everything in focus. So now if we zoom in and let's look at the picture. So here's the very top. Everything's in focus. And I also do this to look to see if I can find any areas that kind of look blurry. So if this is a windy day, these limbs here, they might have a little blur, like a ghost effect to them but it wasn't. The only thing we're seeing is a more milky cascading waterfall, which is what I wanted anyway. So I'll just scroll down more. You can see, look, leaves in focus, the rocks are in focus, the moss, everything's in focus. And as we move down, this is in focus here. Now there is one bad thing that happened to this and that's the bubbles. It doesn't know what to do with that. And this would require a little cleanup. And I would probably do that when I'm in Photoshop because the cleanup tools are a lot better. So I would probably go to the removal tool and start hitting this. And, and, and it could be pretty time consuming actually um, by you know clicking and getting rid of all, all these little bubbles that kind of morphed into a white spot. And it is time consuming, like I said, but you know, if you want a good picture, it's those little things that make it a great picture. So just spend the time while you're still in Photoshop and clean this up. And you might even want to try, let's grab our lasso tool and we'll grab an area like this. Let's see if we can't clean up a lot all at once. Hit generative fill and generate. And as you can see, it, it kind of did a good job. We got rid of some of it, but it actually more, made more of a mess. So I would probably just stick with my removal tool and start hitting everything a little bit at a time and clean it up. Now, after you have your combination uh, picture all put together, all focus stacked, everything's in focus, we now want to go back into Photoshop, I mean, into Lightroom and finish this photograph and process it completely. So I'd hit File and Save. It is then going to save this file. It's going to be kind of larger, and so it might take a little bit because there's a lot of layers in here. And once it is saved, it'll end up back in Lightroom as a, I save them as a PSB file so we can process it in Lightroom. Here's the photograph here, the PSB file. And as you can see, it's got the same exposure settings as our original ones, but it has everything in focus. So that's how we do the focus stacking. Now, I have fully processed this photograph and this is my finished version right here. As you can see, it's, I just cleaned it up, cleaned up the water and everything. Uh, I can show you real quick, but I don't want to make this video. It's more about focus stacking and, and not really about processing. 
But for, for those who are curious, I can go through this real quick. Uh, I put about 22 masks on in total, uh, starting out with uh, this first mask. Uh, it just kind of changed the contrast on the rocks. Let me turn the overlays on uh, so that we can get some dark edges that have contrast of the light and then lighten and add a little clarity to the top of the rocks. Uh, in this mask, I'm darkening the edges of the rocks to give more contrast between light and dark. Uh, lightened up the areas around the moss and then darkened the moss uh, in between to give it, give it more contrast between the light and dark areas. Again, adding more contrast to the edges of the rocks. Uh, in this area, I actually uh, used point color and used a brush to mask in the leaves uh, and then use point color to give them a little more orange brown color. Before that, they were kind of dull. Uh, as you can see, that's what they look like before. That's what they look like after. Let me turn the overlay off so we can see. So before and after, before and after, because that's actually what they really look like. Uh, then in this area and this area, again, I use point color to brighten up the leaves on these trees to add more contrast between them and the rocks. Uh, this add a little more clarity to the rock, add a little light to the side of this rock here. As you can see, it was a little darker and I wanted to bring a little more light in. Uh, this was adding more contrast to the rocks up above, darkened those leading edges of the rocks, same way here. Uh, this was adding just a little light area in the water area uh, to make it pop because it looked a little flat to me. This is adding more light to the center of the photograph, so I have contrast between the dark areas at the top and the bottom, and to bring out a little more light in the center of the photograph to make it have a little more three-dimensional look darken the top of the trees again so I get contrast between the center focal area of the photograph, darken the, the top and add a little uh, clarity to the tree so they appear more tree-like, more individualized. Uh, add a little light and green to this area to make it pop and then added final ones uh, had to do with the water area to lighten up this area, give it a little more uh, definition, more 3D effect and then this mask again more light this one was kind of important because these areas were blown out uh, too much too much white to, and uh, so what I did is I just uh, took a brush and brushed in less highlight so that we get more definition and not a blowout in those areas and the final right here just add a little sunlight on this little waterfall to give it just a little more tension because it was really kind of pretty right there at the bottom of the waterfall so that's how I processed it after I did the focus stacking. So all together just came out a lot nicer with everything in focus from front to back and contrast and color changes in the photograph. Well, I hope this helped out. If anybody has any questions or need more explanation on the process that I used, don't be afraid to shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help out any way I can. I'll talk to you all soon.